people say your music has power to change people and influence people's lives. So how does that make you feel? Make me feel satisfied. Feel as if, you know, I am fathering something as that is that is real good, you know what I mean? Feeling responsible for some form of goodness. I am the store manager for the shop of goodness and mercy. Hello everybody, you're welcome back to another round of the Reggae Appreciation Society. In this video, we are taking a look at the time Joseph Hill paused a civil war in Sierra Leone. Joseph Constantine Hill, the charismatic, highly spiritual and humble frontman of the legendary reggae band culture, was born on the 22nd of January 1949 in St. Andrews, Jamaica. He had a very high musical IQ and taught himself how to play musical instruments at a very young age. He moved to Kingston, Jamaica as a teenager to find a job and also to further his musical ambitions. In around 1968, he joined a band in Kingston called the Soul Defenders and served as the group's backing vocalist, percussionist and songwriter. In 1971, the group was chosen by legendary producer Coxone Dodd to work as an in-house band at his famous Studio One Studios and immediately they began to serve the studio's famous clients such as Burning Spear, Dennis Brown, Alton Ellis and the Heptones to name a few. Working with these elite musicians and staying under the tutelage of Coxon Dodd sharpened his many crafts and made him a master in the music business. The Soul Defenders left Studio One in 1974 and recorded scanty success, forcing Hill to focus his energies on performing at hotels for tourists, and he eventually moved back to St. Andrews in 1976. Shortly after moving back, he adopted the Rastafarian faith and formed a harmony trio singing group with his cousin Albert Walker and a friend named Kenneth Days, and the band was called the African Disciples. They soon after changed the name to Culture and were soon signed for producer Joe Gibbs record label. Their debut album titled When Two Sevens Clashed was released in 1977. It propelled the group to commercial and critical success that grew from strength to strength for decades to come making Culture one of the most consistent reggae bands of all time. Aside from Joseph Hill's brilliance, the band stayed relevant through spiritually potent and socially uplifting messages powered flawlessly by excellent instrumentals by the finest musicians which Hill assembled to form his backing band. The band's debut album and lead track, When Two Sevens Clash, foreshadowed the sort of influence that they would have over their listeners and society in general. Marcus Garvey is renowned around the world for his activism but is revered by Rastafarians as a prophet. Garvey had a vision of an apocalyptic event that would spark worldwide chaos and death on July 7, 1977, 7777 aka When Two Sevens Clash. This prophecy served as an inspiration for Joseph Hill to write the song Two Sevens Clash a song that described that date as a sort of judgment day. The single was released in Jamaica on the 22nd of June 1977 and was a massive hit. But its commercial success also had a huge societal impact as the song spread panic and fear throughout the country on that day. On the 7th of July 1977, a large number of people stayed at home, schools didn't open, banks and businesses were largely closed. The army was even sent in to the streets and placed on high alert to maintain the peace if necessary. Albert Walker and Kenneth Days left the band in 1982, but Hill kept the band going by recruiting new members and continuing to tour North America, Europe and Africa. The influence of the band has been immense and the greatest example of this took place in 1998 in Sierra Leone. The Sierra Leone Civil War is recorded as being one of the most savage conflicts ever on the face of the earth. It began on 23rd of March 1991 and was fought between the Revolutionary United Front aka RUF and the Sierra Leonean government. The unspeakable savagery of the RUF included the cold-blooded massacre of civilians in the thousands, sexual assault, forced recruitment of child soldiers and the amputation of the limbs of innocent people to name just a few of the horrors that they unleashed on the people of Sierra Leone. During that conflict in January 1998, Joseph Hill visited Sierra Leone to perform a show in Freetown despite all the carnage taking place in the country. When he arrived in Freetown, he went round the city to raise awareness for the show and interacted freely with the people mingling with crowds in public places. He got feelers from RUF informants that Freetown had been surrounded and it was best he leave the city which was about to be attacked and destroyed any moment from then. 
You see, Culture was insanely popular in Sierra Leone and his music was also very popular on the playlists of the RUF rebels in the bushes. Similar to how Bob Marley's songs were often played by Zimbabwean rebels in their war of independence two decades before then. Joseph Hill famously told the RUF informants, Stop fighting and I will leave Freetown. Hill stubbornly stayed in Freetown for almost two weeks and performed his concert. An RUF commander was said to have mocked a government official in a statement that you people should be glad that Pa Joseph is here. Otherwise, this place, this place meaning Freetown, would have been destroyed within 24 hours. Hill left Syria alone at the end of January 1998 and the RUF staged a savage assault on Freetown in February, killing thousands of people before Ekomog forces drove them out. Joseph Hill's experiences inspired the song War in Sierra Leone, which was on his Payday album released in 1999. He kept on making albums and toured actively until he passed away on August 19, 2006 in Germany, just before his show he was built to perform at. Hill's legacy lives on as one of the most influential charismatic artists of all time. His impact was musical as it was societal. So there you have it. Please like this video and we'd love to hear from you so please leave a comment in the comment section. And until next time, God bless.